Well, hello everybody. Glad you could come over again for another visit. It's so nice that you come over every time. And today we have company again. Today we have a visitor and her name is Alice. Hello everybody. I'm so excited. What are you excited about, Alice? My parents are adopting a baby. Really? Well, that's terrific news. Boy or girl? They're adopting a little boy. I'm going to be somebody's big sister and I'm so excited. Really? That's amazing. Oh, do you know when the baby's coming over? The baby's joining our family next week and I'm so excited. Fantastic. Now, for those of you out there who may not know what adoption is, adoption is a wonderful thing. Sometimes there's a child who doesn't have parents. Perhaps the mother and the father have died. Other times the mother has a child, but she's unable to look after him or her. Whatever the reason, the child does not have parents who are available. So then there's a couple who want a child. So they take that child into their home and they sign adoption papers so that that child becomes legally, in the eyes of the law, their own. Yes, and the new baby who's coming to my house will be just as much my brother as if he had come from my mother's tummy. And I'm so excited! Woo! That's right. And you know what? Something, you know something, Alice? All those who are effectually called are not only justified, they are adopted by God the Father into his family. They are? Absolutely. Do you remember what benefits are given to those who are effectually called? Hmm, let's see if I remember. Those who are effectually called receive in this life justification, adoption. Oh yeah, there's where adoption is sanctification, and the several benefits which in this life accompany or flow from them. I, I, I memorized that and I didn't even realize that adoption was right in there. Well, we're going to learn about adoption today. Last week, we learned about justification, and this week, we're learning about adoption. And it leads us to the next question in the Catechism. What is adoption? And what is it when it comes to God and you and me? Well, adoption, here's the answer that the Catechism gives. Adoption is an act of God's free grace by which we are received into the company of God's children and have a right to all the privileges of God's sons. What is free grace? Well, grace is a special favor from God. Favor from God? Hmm. I guess we have to work really hard to get God's special favor, right? Wrong. God's favor, God's grace, his special favor is free, unmerited, and unearned. You can't buy it, and you can't work for it. God's grace is free. It reminds us of what Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1 says. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Sounds amazing. So let's see. Adoption is by God's free grace. But what is adoption? when it comes to God and us. Well, if we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are received into his family, into the company of God's children. But why would God want people who sin against him to be in the company of his children? Well, because God loved his people and sent his son to die for them. His children 
have been justified by faith in Jesus Christ, and they are at peace with God. Because we have been reconciled to God by the death of his Son, and because we are justified because of his resurrection, God adopts us into his family as his children. Hmm. God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for our sins so that we could become his children. Hmm. This sounds too good to be true. Does the Bible say that God loves us this much and in this way? Yes, it does. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, the Apostle John says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us? that we should be called the children of God, and so we are. Does that mean that every person is a child of God? No, only those who receive Jesus Christ as God in the flesh, who died for our sins and rose from the dead. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name. But what does it mean to receive Jesus? Well, let's put it this way. When I received you into my home today, um, what happened? You welcomed me inside. Exactly. And when we received Jesus, we welcome him. Jesus came to the earth to be our savior the one who would save us from our sins. If we believe that Jesus is that Savior and that he is our Savior, then we have received him. We have welcomed him. And those who welcome or receive Jesus, well, God gives them the right to become the children of God. This is incredible. After rebelling against God, he still loves us enough to send his son to die for us and call us his children if we receive him? But we weren't God's children to start with, so how can God just start calling us his children? Because he adopted us into his family, just like your parents are adopting a new baby brother for you. Oh, yeah! If my parents can adopt a baby... I guess God can adopt us if he wants to. He sure can. But does the Bible actually say that God adopts us into his family? Yes, it does. For example, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, the Apostle Paul says he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. Hmm. Well, that's one. And in Ephesians, or not Ephesians, Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, he tells us God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. That's two. And in Romans 8, 15, we learn, for you did not, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the, the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. That's three. Well, one, two, three passages in the Bible. I guess that settles it. God adopts those who receive his son into his family. Exactly. Now, even if the Bible only said it once, that would be enough for us to believe it, though. Mm, yeah, I guess you're right. But there's even more. The Catechism says adoption is an act of God's free grace by which we are received into the company of God's children and have a right to all the privileges of God's sons. Privileges? What are privileges? Well, a privilege is a, a special right that is granted to some people, but not to everyone. As a child of your parents, you have certain privileges that I don't have. I do? What are they? Well, your parents look after you, they feed you, they give you a place to live. Your parents do that for you because you have a right to those privileges. I do not. 
You see, your parents don't look after me. Your parents don't feed me. And your parents don't give me a place to live. Nope, they don't. Now, these are your privileges because you're your parents' children. And there are privileges for being adopted into the family of God? There sure are. In Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, the Apostle Paul says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. What's an heir? Well, an heir is someone who is going to receive an inheritance. What's an inheritance? Well, inher an inheritance is a gift that parents give to their children, usually something that's left to them after they die. As adopted children in God's family, each one of us is an heir of God, our Father. God has gifts in store for us because we are his children. And because Christ is God's son, Christ is our brother, and we are co-heirs or joint heirs with Jesus. Hold it. Jesus Christ is our brother? Yes. In Romans chapter 8, verse 29, the Apostle Paul says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. The Father is changing us and making us like Jesus, and this is happening through the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of that has to do with sanctification, and we'll learn about that, Lord willing, next week. But we are being changed to, so that we are more and more like Jesus. Jesus is the firstborn son in that he is the main heir of the highest rank of all the sons in the father's family. But we are joint heirs along with Christ. We receive many honors along with Christ. What are some of those honors? Well, for one thing, we get to suffer with Christ. Suffer? Who wants to suffer? Well, Christ suffered for our sins on the cross. Later, Christ's apostles were beaten for preaching in the name of Jesus. And do you know what they did? Acts chapter 5, verse 41 says, So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. You see, because Christ had suffered for them, it was an honor for the apostles to suffer for Jesus in return, they had the privilege of suffering like their Lord and teacher. Hmm, I see what you mean, but it's a little hard to get excited about suffering. Well, we're not supposed to go looking for opportunities to suffer, but we also, but we are supposed to be willing to suffer for him. And when that happens, we are to count that as a privilege. Okay, but is that all that we have to look forward to as God's adopted children? Oh, no. Uh, Romans 8 also says that if we suffer with Christ, we will also be glorified with him. And Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, if you suffer, great is your reward in heaven. In the new heaven and the new earth, we will be gloriously beautiful and exalted, just like Jesus is. Jesus will always be infinitely more glorious than we are, but we will be glorious in a similar manner, in a similar way. Hmm, the benefits that come along with being part of God's family are immense. Even though we may have to suffer for the name of Christ, the benefits far outweigh the bad stuff. You're right, Alice, that's exactly right. Well, that's all for today, folks. Now remember, the benefits of those who are effectually called are one, justification, two, adoption, and three, sanctification. Join us next week when, Lord willing, we'll explore the meaning behind the third benefit, which is sanctification. And by the way, Alice, I think your uh, parents might be able to use a little baby blanket for the new adopted baby that's coming over. 
Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. Well, folks, see you then. Ta-ta!